Thank you, Susan. The ancient Greek philosopher Heraclitus <coughs> has a famous remark. It's usually translated something like, we are estranged from that which is most familiar. Many interpretations exist for this saying, suggesting our alienation in economic terms, in social terms, psychological terms. Um, for me, the phrase has a peculiar resonance with what in fact is a salutary relationship to reality. Not that one would overcome the, strange, the estrangedness, but that awareness of it becomes a creative source. Mm. And the poems that I'm going to read today uh, come from over the whole of my, my work. The earliest one is from the 1960s. But they're, in a sense, a, um, a, a taxonomy of estrangement. So many different species of, of um, ways in which we're estranged from that which is most, most familiar. Stone poem. You are lost in the possession of the only thing you have. The stone and its mortal enemies atone. They sit together and folded as before the gaze of a single mind. It is cold stone embedded in the hands of thought, ejecting and rebracing all that can occur. The fool. The fool's money falls from the air. In the mind, one goes on arguing. I pick it up and lose my mortality. All of what I hide, you are. The dark bird flies to the dark north sky. Song. I like you. I like you. I like you too. You, 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 you. You, 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 you. Apple ate on plate. Oh look, more apple on that plate. Bite, 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 bite. Chew, 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 chew. <laughs> Some mammalian impertinences <laughs> that dog is at least one half not dog <laughs> that ape men thought to talk sign talk to thought himself a man to talk to the cat at the top of the stairs has a serious look in his loungy eyes as I climb the stairs and confute him. My hat had vanished. When that cat that sat up looked straight at it, that hat had had it. <laughs> I am taken for the power I desire. People think I'm real. I'm not real. I stand on the roof. I vanish. I see the sleeves of myself grow dim on the plain. 
every moment possesses a two-headed mammal. Two little mice run out of the body. The whole replaces itself with another mouse hole into the night of its own perturbation. One of the mice has a large brown wooden spoon it found. It took that spoon and dropped it into time, causing quite a pother. The two-headed mouse disappears in its own attempt to catch a glimpse of itself. One thing looks in back of itself, and one thing looks ahead of itself, and what it sees is another version of itself looking back at itself. Still shots of myself thinking in numerous poses in many ages of my life, some not lived yet. Entity. Being the angry black spider lion demon drawn up into an abstract potentiality for manifesting as such, tucked into the gut and its bad digestive apparatus. Bad, because the demon has dissolved itself into it par abstraction. Or you have dissolved it, created it, abstracted the natural manifestation of the hairy bellied demon spider lion, so it withdraws into an abstraction of its nature. getting angry, and then affectionate in rapid alternation, contradicting people, being able to talk to your father and not being able to talk to your father in the same breath. They take the car away. They take it away. They came and took it away. They came and took the car away. Took it away. Took it. Took the car. They took my car. They came and they took my car away. They came and took my car. They took my car. <laughs> An elephant triumphant through the towns. Large crowds of curious persons, stampeding persons. I on my cabana, I at the roof of worlds, roofs of towns. I walk, I ride, I rule, I turn away. I take my elephant away, take it from the life of ease, the life disease, the animal life of pain. I take myself away from life of pain, that white heat shining, white heat very fine and shining in the lining of the garment that is the world. The man's bright coat, its secret shining. Oh, he wore it in the avenue, he wore it when it rained. He went to lunch. They took my car away, they took my car away, they took it away. How can we ever be happy again? How can we be free? How can pleasure take us home to town? How can we ever be merry again? How can we be gay? Now they have taken my car away. They took my car away. I am an elephant. I have something to say. I am an elephant. I have something to say. I have to take my elephant to town. My fine coat shining. The elephant's gray skin shining strangely, strangely dull yet shining shining in the rain as it walked through town, shining in the mud as it wagged and waddled. Now they have taken my car away. How can I shine now? Wow. Someone calls on the hotel phone to say, all the forms you filed have failed to say the things the forms are filed for. <laughs> Someone calls on the hotel phone to say, the world you left for holiday has vanished as you have vanished out of that world. 
Someone calls on the phone to say, the written word's discredited, the spoken word, and has it ever been? They take your car away. <laughs> Someone on the phone has called only to say, the old hotel consumes the signs by which the world is strung. Nothing but rooms surrounded by light. This is how it is, how it seems, seems for me, how being seems. Some deep displacement tussles with the norms, dislodged, but not too far, not far enough for abject force to storm relief. I think so. A black hat on a white table budges on its own whim, as if that, as if the crockery jiggled from some metaphysical impertinence, some principle askew, some arguable invariant discredited after all. At your very premise, a hairline fracture rigs the whole. No thought remains, no law obtains, bright sun is all. I will not enter the gate, but just as that thought's out, the portal turns about, and there you stand across the perilous line. On the weirdness of dead things. What does it mean to have an idea? Step outside of that and everything is weird. To have an idea means to stop the weirdness of things, the weirdness of everything, of just this thing, given the weirdness of it all. Any thought and we're all back in high school. We know who our fathers are and what a father is. Mr. Solomon has hung himself, Hortense said, because he lost his businesses. And his daughter suddenly seemed sort of weird. Lois Caden was run over on her bicycle and her father bought a big dog and came around to visit everyone. And he seemed sort of weird. No ideas about death dispel the weird little aura that contaminates the intimate survivors. My mother was afraid of cats, but before she died, she allowed a little white one to come in and live with us. She died, and I seemed weird to my own perusal. Something tightened in the light, eyes without hairs. Would you rather live when paradigms are breaking down or when new theories burgeoning with broad predictive powers all seem confirmed? The feeling that we know what's going on, then the loss of that. So Newton, Aristotle, whomever, proved wrong on basic points. Zoroaster, Buddha, contradicted anywhere but never wrong in that sense. The weirdness programmed in to the root of the doctrine, such that its loss confirms rather than denies the essential point in it. Whole people seem a little weird now that that idea, the one that moved the blood in them, has been reft from them. Think of the welcome of the white ones as old gods returning. Not only the hideous irony of the consequence, but see those people standing on the shore, pervaded by an aura whose true portent remained concealed from them. You can taste the chill. Being doesn't die. And you, who are not as you seem, but being alone is all that is in you, the residue the oddness of being itself, the glow still fading 
after the flame's out. Maples, aspens, cedars, ash. In the woods, they are not trees addressed from near enough to know the work of texture, habit, root clutch stone. These names restrain themselves before the fabulous intimacy of contact ever deepening. The weirdness resolved in intimacy, not idea. <coughs> the surge of being and being with, without termination, in positings of the known, but journeyings along itself, through itself, micro world and body death, depth, redounding in ever subtler self-instructive motion toward continuum. Um, two more. Disaster areas for Josie. The elephants have multiplied in a forest beyond the world, though in this world they dwindle. Or beyond the world, one elephant wags in the vagueness, or wags in the brilliance of vast transcosmic spaces. Or mind spaces, one elephant, inside of which a cosmos turns its thought. And every thought that rises easily seems to ride one elephant, each ponderous step the heartbeat of some cosmos, and thought is a wheel. Disaster regions plague the globe through which my elephant passes, seeking immemorial grounds, safe from marauders, to which it must return as to some cosmic home beyond the world, there to release its store of furious memory, that the world through which it made its lifelong sojourn might turn once more. Each thought released compels one turn of the void that forms a world. And every thought yet seems a chest of inestimable treasure mounted on some elephant locked against a forest of marauders, terrible poachers of ivory, out to ruin another sacred realm that precious thoughts still walk in. A thousand elephants walk beyond the world, their great trunks wagging in the dimness, and the trumpet calls they utter to each other pass as waves of thought across the void, causing waves of thought across the world to disturb our mortal slumber. Sad are the worlds in tow of captive elephants, broken worlds. The elephants thrash in chains for children in a theme park on holiday to ride them. They sway in disconsolate rhythms in the park dust while the children clamor. And the cosmos is some theme park each planet is in tow on the back of an elephant, proceeding with constant tread about some dusty sun. And every thought that rises in an earth mind sparks at the end of a ray from an elephant's eye across such planetary spaces. And everywhere the elephants are rocking in grief that they cannot return to immemorial grounds to revive the worlds. Incubation, one. Only I in the night, only one star, only one moment, only one owl, only one owl shooting from its covert, only one mirror cracked into facets, only one smaragdine paradigm, Dawn burst from absence. Two. Truth inviolate before mere verities. The cracker thinkers 
unmanned in the dawn light. Three. In my mother's womb, I dreamed of a night before sentience, of being unmothered by temperature or chemistry, of silence undotted by mottled noises, of a deeper dream before the womb, awake without exigency, unbroken by dawnlight. <laughs>